Hey everybody, this is Nick with 3M. Today we're gonna be having a video avoiding inconsistent scratch profiles during blend prep. More and more challenging colors and challenging met metallics are finding their way on the market. So we're gonna have to adjust our sanding process to accommodate those colors and make it so we can provide consistency in our scratch profile for that color. Inconsistent scratch profiles can be very hard to see from the naked eye, so we're gonna have to start following some best practices when it comes to sanding to avoid these inconsistencies when we're blending. Additionally, OEMs are having more and more strict requirements during ADAS and the paint process for parts that is only gonna possibly give you one opportunity to get it right. So we want to get it right the first time and not have to go back. And inconsistency and scratches can force the color to change or shift in these challenging colors, which would force you to go back and reshoot that, which may not be allowed by some OEMs for some of the ADAS systems and some of the safety systems on the car. So it's really important to focus on the consistency of the scratch profile that you're laying down prior to painting. All right, so how do inconsistent scratch profiles happen? First, it can happen with the buildup of paint. So when you look at the panel, around the edges of the panel, there can be inconsistency. It can be built higher. We call that picture framing, where it's a little bit higher right around the edge. And so when you start sanding, you can drag some of those imperfections from a picture frame into the middle of the panel. And when we start spraying ultrafine metallics, that can actually highlight the picture frame and the inconsistencies in the scratch profile. We can create too deep a scratch by putting too much pressure while we're sanding onto the panel, and that can cause the scratch to become slightly coarser, which would be inconsistent, and that can also be highlighted by these ultrafine metallics and the very challenging colors out on the market. And if we don't use dust extraction, we're not giving ourselves the best opportunity because dust can land in the bottom of that scratch and create challenges further on down the line. So, we want to use dust extraction while we're sanding to capture as much of that dirt and debris and remove it from the panel while we can. All right, now that we've discussed what challenges that these types of inconsistent scratches can create, let's talk about how do we avoid these imperfections. So when it comes to paint removal or buildup of nibs, the first thing we want to do is identify them on the panel. So we'll run our hand across the panel and we'll see and identify where the nibs are, then be sure to go back and clean that panel with a wax and grease remover or soap and water to remove any oils that may be on your skin that may have transferred onto the panel. Then we're gonna grab some sandpaper and we're gonna um, start sanding around the edges first. We wanna get the edges first and then we wanna sand with the DA into the middle of the panel. So I'll grab my flexible abrasives, thousand grade, I'll sand the edges of the panel first and then we'll talk about DA sanding. All right, now that I'm done with my hand sanding, to note, when I was hand sanding, I don't want to apply too much pressure. If I apply too much pressure while I'm sanding, I can create inconsistent scratches and deeper scratches. So maintain consistent sand scratch pressure. Don't over apply the pressure so you don't put a deeper scratch than the, abra the grade of abrasive that you're using. Now I'm gonna be moving to handing or sanding with a DA. Now when sanding with a DA, I've got an interface pad on. And when I'm sanding with the DA, I'm also gonna have dust extraction going. By having dust extraction going, I'm removing dust at the point of creation. So while I'm creating dust, it's getting removed from the surface, helping to maintain the most consistent scratch profile possible. It's also gonna help eliminate and reduce the amount of dust that can settle into the deeper scratches while I'm sanding. So I can help maintain consistent scratch profile. And I am sanding and being, making sure to sand following the P pages. So the paint companies will tell you exactly what you need to be using for the scratch profile for the colors that you're gonna be painting. So be sure to consult the P pages and make sure you use the proper grade of sandpaper for those P pages. All right, now that we're done sanding, we've shown you why it's important to not have inconsistent scratches in your panel, how to avoid putting inconsistent scratches into your panel, and how to get a hopefully cleaner, more consistent paint job. Thank you for watching the video, and we'll see you next time. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you won't miss our next video. 
If you have questions or have ideas for future topics, leave us a comment down below. If you want more content like this, be sure to check us out at the 3M Collision Repair Academy. The link for that is in the description below. Thank you for watching. See you next time.